Hello and welcome to the channel. And we all know that modern gear is really useful and helpful while we go to bigger events, but... But don't you just love all the old stuff? Hello and welcome to the channel. And as you can see, I'm gonna talk today about my older gear that I use and that is my Vietnam gear. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a tour about the stuff that I use while I use my Vietnam gear, why I use it, where it came from, what events that I did with this gear, and um, yeah, just a little bit more history about where everything came from. Now, I will split this up in a few different parts in the video and you can just scroll through the parts with the numbers at the in the description where you can just jump to the parts that you want to see because Vietnam gear and the Vietnam theme is something um, really important for me because this is where everything started for me. This is where the ground of everything that I do in Airsoft really started. So I will start off with telling you a little bit of the history of the gear that I'm using. Um, I will tell you what gear, what basic gear that you can use Well, if you want to go to Vietnam themed events. Uh, then I'm going to show you some different parts that you can add to your gear if you want to go a little bit more advanced. And I'm also going to talk to you about the events that I went to and the events that I organized in a Vietnam themed uh, thing. And here we go with the first part. Where did everything come from? Why did I start playing in Vietnam gear? What made me use this stuff? Now, when I started playing Airsoft, there wasn't really something like this out there. There was one team that I knew that played all the same outfits. Well, there were a few teams, but not that many. There were a few teams that played in all the same outfits. There was used usually, if you go to a game, it was a bunch of everything, just everything. And now and then you had a team that was like dressed in awesome outfits and they were all the same and you can see oh this is a team and this was the thing with first of the night aircraft they played vietnam airsoft themed um style dress up thingy and it was just amazing the guys that were wearing it they were going back to basic like the basic stuff the basic webbing just and when water and go into the field and have fun doing it and it's the mix between the gear and the people that made me so enthusiastic about joining that team and laying the groundwork of my airsoft career or airsoft future or the thing that i'm going to do in airsoft later on like i said the gear they were using was just a bare minimum what you need to get into a fight and go to an airsoft game you you have your magazines and you have some water on you and you have some place to put some snacks and you're ready to go that simplistic thing of making stuff and gear wise is a thing that I have been doing with all my gear outfits along the years. Um, it has to be simple, it has to be effective, and um, yeah, it just needs to work. And Vietnam gear just works. Yes, it's a little bit heavier, but it works. So the team was based on the first of nine aircraft unit that was in Vietnam in 1969. And if you look some information up about the first of nine aircraft, you can see there is one small part that is called D Troop. Those are the headhunters. Like I said, most of the gear they used during that time period in 1969 was the canvas gear and, and slowly it was getting replaced by the uh, newer nylon that was lighter when it got wet. Canvas, if it gets wet, yeah, it gets a lot more heavier. But I can talk a long time about the different types of gear they were using in the Vietnam War because it was a long war. Uh, but in this video, I'm just going to focus on the gear that I'm using and uh, the things that you can use if you want to go to a Vietnam event and just want to have some fun. Like this is somewhat historical correct there are a lot of items that can be replaced by uh, newer post-war gear and still be uh, accurate or as accurate as possible to be in an airsoft game because a lot of the gear that i'm using is getting harder to get on i bought this 10 years ago then there was a lot of vietnam gear around but now it's getting more pricey to do that so if you want to do a vietnam kit uh, check out what you where you can buy stuff, what you want, and how far you want to go. So that brings us to the next step, and that's telling you what the basic gear is that I'm using. And yep, you can see it on me. Um, the first layer that I'm using is a simple green t-shirt. You can buy it from different countries. It's just a simple green t-shirt. Um, yeah, you can debate with the neck, what type of neck you can use. And depending on the year that you wanna show, you can even use a white t-shirt. Uh, but for me, it's 1969 and uh, they were mostly using the green t-shirts. So that's why I'm wearing a green t-shirt. The next layer is a green shirt and this one is over 10 years old. It's my first shirt that I bought uh, when I was in that team and I'm still using it up to this day. At the end of the video, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to store your gear to make sure that it doesn't 
break down by just laying in your closet or uh, by doing something wrong with it. And on the shirt you can see some different tags on it and this is a special one. This is an in-country made tag that uh, was made for the first, uh, first of the Ninth Cavalry real cav and that was Delta Troop, so D Troop. So this is the insignia that was in-country made uh, for D Troop and a lot of us that, it, that are in the team have this on our breast pocket. There is a lot about the gear that I like on how the uh, pockets are fitted and where the pockets are and how it, it is light to wear in the field. Um, I'm not going to go a lot more in detail about that because yeah, every shirt, uh, there are some different patterns. We are, I'm using the third pattern and I bought mine at ASMC, that's a German website and I will put some links in the description because I found the exact same shirt and they're still selling it. This is a reproduction shirt because I don't want to use the real ones uh, while I'm playing airsoft. Now this one has lasted me really long, um, I didn't expect that, but I'm on my second pair of pants because they got ripped by uh, the Belgium environment, so let's call it like that. And when we're talking pants, I'm gonna take my pants with me. Uh, I, don't, I didn't wear the pants, I'm just wearing my, yeah, because it's in the video and you don't see my pants. Uh, so the pants is the normal third pattern green pants. Um, as you can see, it is a lot of color difference between the inside and the outside because this has been in the sun a lot, this has been dirty, this has been uh, muddy. Um, and one thing that you can see on my pants is that my uh, pockets are ripped, there are some holes in it, and that's the way I like my gear. It has to be shown that it's worn. If you're in the field and uh, you just look like you're fresh from the, I don't know, conveyor belt and going into your uh, game, it doesn't just it, it just doesn't look right your gear need to look like it has been worn and with the broken pockets you can see a lot of pictures of the vietnam war where people are having ripped clothes and and missing pockets or stuff going wrong with their gear um and that's something that yeah i like doing that it's not that i broke it it just broke while using it so i keep it broken and if i can i will fix it with my own hand and i will sew it back together like they did back in the day so pants on my feet I just wear black leather boots when I go playing in uh, Belgium or in any airsoft game because I don't want to ruin my real ones that are dated 1966. They're really hard to get on, uh, especially in this size because I have a, I want a wide shoe and this is really an awesome shoe and I don't want to ruin it uh, with all the Belgium things sticking out of the ground and ruining my shoes. So I just use the black leather ones that were used in the beginning of the war. Later on in the war they were changed by the the green um, jungle boots, uh, but yeah, the black ones will do fine for airsofting. I forgot to say also about the pants, uh, it's still available at ASMC, you can still buy the same pants that I bought, I just love this. It's simple, it's not that expensive and it does the trick. Now that we talked about everything that is on my body, let's go to the head. Now there are a few options that you can use. Uh, the cheapest one that you can use is a triangular bandage that you can find in any post-war uh, army dump it's just simple it's a triangular thing you just take it and you put it on your head and you look cool all right that's it it protects your head from the sun it protects your head from the rain uh, not that much from the rain but it, it just it's a cool look i like it so this is the first option that you can use uh bandana this is the cheapest one this is a post-war the next option that you can do for headgear is a boonie. Um, there is a lot of stories about boonies going around. They were used in the Vietnam War. Uh, people, some people didn't like it, but boonies, I like them. Um, this boonie is post-war. This is one from 1984. I bought it 10 years ago and it's holding up really fine. And as you can see, there is a little dirty stuff on the boonie and I just like the look. I know I should clean it, but I just like how it looks and yep, yeah, it just feels right. It's, um, it's the thing that I have been using for 10 years um, in the field, all the field. Cool little piece of kit, I like it. Uh, and then the third option, you can see it right here, that is the helmet. And this is the most expensive one that you can get as a headgear. But if you play with a helmet, I can warn you, if you're not used playing with a helmet, this is a steel helmet, you will feel your neck after a day of playing. Like this one is a post-war, you can see it on the inside. Uh, there are some differences between the real Vietnam ones, but these are more expensive than this one. This is a reproduction, I really like it, it's simple, it's easy. And the helmet also has a Mitchell cover, and those are getting more difficult to find the real ones, but there are uh, good reproductions out there, I don't really know where to find them, but they're out there. So if you look for it, you can find the cover, the helmet, and um, yeah, it's a cool addition to your kit. Put it back here. 
And I forgot the cheapest option, like, don't just, don't wear anything, just hair, use your hair. People didn't always wear something on their head, so this is also an option. So now let's go to the most expensive part of the gear, uh, and that's the webbing. I'm gonna take it with me. There we go. And my webbing is made out of a few different parts. This is the cool thing about Alice gear. Uh, it's the first modeler system. No, I don't think it's the first one, but it's a modeler system that you can use. You can put your pouches on different ways and you can customize it yourself. Like I said in different videos, I like the flexibility of my gear. And this one is no exception. There is a lot of flexibility in building your webbing. My webbing is a really simple standard one. It has two ammo pouches at the front with two grenades on the sides. There is a small uh, compass or medic pouch on one of the sides of my ammo pouches. There are two canteen covers with both plastic uh, canteens in it. This butt pack is an M61 butt pack. All the other stuff on the belt and on uh, the webbing is M56. One more thing about a butt pack. Some people don't like it. I like to have butt pack on me because I can put a lot of stuff in it while using it in the in the game. Um, if you wear a butt pack, just make sure it's filled. Like you see pictures of people using it like a flat pancake. Uh, just put the pants in it. There is like clothes in this one. If I don't have it filled up with other stuff, there are different pieces of clothes. So if I just want to take some water or some more magazines or some BBs with me, I can just take a piece of cloth out of this butt pack and I put other stuff in there. So yeah, it was always going to be a little bit filled. So I just like it, the look of a filled backpack. Um, there are some other options that you can add to your webbing. I'm not going to go over all the options that you can do with your setup or your webbing. Um, this is a simple one. You can remove stuff, you can add stuff. It's all up to you. Uh, depends on how much money you want to spend on it because this stuff is expensive. Like I said, I use reproduction stuff for my clothing and I use real stuff for my webbing. There is some good reproduction out there. Um, I didn't buy it yet, I didn't test it yet, so I don't really know how good it is and how well it stands in the weather. Um, but this one is, is a real one and uh, all my clothing is reproduction. And when you made this basic kit, um, you can get a little bit more creative and add some stuff to your gear. Now for me, I usually just choose the simple kit with my webbing and my basic stuff but if you want to go a little bit further and you want to go as a machine gunner an rto uh, an officer uh, anything else and you want to add something to your gear be my guest and add some stuff to it now i played as an rto a long time ago and uh, then i had a converted prc10 uh, to get on my back and that's a really heavy radio it's not something like the small bowfing radios where you can just put in your pocket it's a big thing on your back and you have to adjust your kit to that radio it was really fun to wear that and bring it into the field but it was a heavy thing uh, but it was fun I, I really liked the rto roll so that's one of the things that you can add to your kit that's a radio you can choose from the prc 10 the prc 6 or the prc uh, 25 or 77 i there are a lot of radios out there that you can choose from. Now enough about the RTO roll, let's, let's go to some things that I wear on my basic kit. And one of those things is bandoliers. Simple bandoliers that carry magazines. I have one, I have two. Why two? Because it looks cool to have two bandoliers over your shoulders. You can buy cheap magazines to put in there or I have seen people just putting uh, small pieces of wood in there. Those are some, uh, I think, 50 round magazines, they're not the best, not the greatest. More about that in uh, a later part of the video. This is a real struggle to get the magazines out there. Um, so yeah, uh, I mostly wear it for the looks because it just looks nice. Uh, the next part that you can use uh, to upgrade your kit is a Claymore bag. And a Claymore bag is like a man purse that you can put anything in there. You can put different magazines there, you can put snacks in there, you can put mission items in there. This is just a cool little thing that you can use for everything. So Claymore bags are really useful. It has two pockets where you can put, well in the real stuff you can put your mine and your detonator in here, but here you can just divide all your stuff. So yeah, cool little piece of kit. I'm not going to add it all up there, otherwise it will be a big pile. Depending on the weather, I will be using a towel like this is a normal green towel there are no markings on it um, you can find the real ones you can still find the real ones but this is just a green towel that you can put on your neck to have some extra heat in your neck I, I use this always when it's a colder day uh, and even if it's a hot day you just 
um, make this wet and you have a cool neck well a cool neck you with what is wearing if you wear this you always have a cool neck but with water on it you will be more it will be cooler oh my god I don't and with this on your neck you don't only look cool but if you make it wet on a hot summer day your body will be cool as well but also a cool little thing um, it's just fun and, and also if you're on the cheap and you want to play in summer um, there are pictures where you can just where people use this, they cut a hole in the towel and they just wear it as a uh, thing that uh, the park color thing is um, and then they have their webbing over it. There are cool pictures about that on the internet. The next thing that you can use is when it's colder, well the thing that I use is this is a Dutch cold long sleeve thingy, it just fits the gear, the color uh, it's not a real Vietnam piece, but uh, when it's colder and I still want to run my Vietnam gear This is the thing that I have as a base layer because it looks the part. Uh, it's not the original thing, but it's close enough And as I said, we're still playing airsoft. This is not reenactment. This is not historical 100% correct uh, you want to just look the part and uh, Well in my opinion, I just want to look the part and uh, look as good as possible uh, one thing that I don't have with me that I just think about is when it's raining I also have a heavyweight poncho that I just put over all my gear I will insert a picture somewhere uh, of me wearing that heavy poncho or somebody else wearing that heavy poncho uh, A real interesting part when you have to play in the rain and um, It's going to be raining all day and you have to be seated or you have to be defensive uh, a big heavyweight poncho lifesaver and the next piece of kit that I use on on my kit is the shoulder holster for an M10 revolver. It's not a kit that you see a lot on infantryman. It's usually uh, worn by uh, helicopter pilots, but I just like it and I wear it because I can. It's an original holster. Um, I don't even know where I found it. I think one of the, the guys of the team found one or two and they sold me one. It's a really hard thing to find and I'm really happy that I have an original one. That's the thing that I use. I really take care of this because I really like it. And another option for this, I'm just gonna throw this here because I'm really careful with it. Um, if I have a like a command roll or I have to be in the base, I use this. This is also a holster for my revolver. And it's just basically a leather belt that I can just wear over my gear. And uh, if I need to be uh, wearing my webbing, I can just wear my webbing over this. So this is more like an HQ duty stuff. And the other one is the one that I'm bringing in the field. Let's put it right here because it's cool. Now this is a little bit more advanced if you want to upgrade your kit a little bit. Now I didn't talk about the different weapons I use, but I have a lot of different weapons that I can use on this kit. I have an M14, an M16, I have a few shotguns, I have an M6079, um, I have a revolver, I have a pistol. But you have to carry all the different magazines. Oh yeah, I have a Thompson that I can use with this kit. Uh, and I'm looking for an M3 uh, grease gun to add to the collection of these guns. But the problem is, if I wear this webbing, this one has the M14 mag pouches. And yes, you can convert your uh, canteen pouches to get some more magazines in there. But I want to keep my canteen pouches for canteen stuff and my mag pouches for the, uh, the mag stuff. So in this magazine pouch, there are some long M16 magazines. Um, yes, they were uh, mostly used at the end of the war and mostly by special forces, uh, but these things are more reliable than the shorter ones that I showed you. And the more reliable ones, the shorter ones, are the high cap magazines and I don't want to use them. So that's why I use the longer magazines while I play with my M16. But if I play with any other weapon, I am have to be creative with how I want to carry my ammunition or my magazines. So when I play with a shotgun, I use a bandolier. It's not an original one, it's the closest thing that I can find that can take the uh, airsoft shotgun shells because the airsoft shotgun shells are a little bit bigger than the real ones and they don't fit in the leather ones otherwise I would have gotten a leather one uh, but this is the closest thing that I could get uh, to carry a lot of shotgun shells when I carry my Thompson I carry something like this this has room for three long Thompson magazines uh, it's a Chinese thing I don't even know if this was used in the Vietnam War or after it uh, but it looks the part and I can carry my magazines in it I know there are some uh, Thompson bags out there that you can use but I don't really like to use those because these are 
um, the big bags and all the things are just in there and this is more organized and I can even put some snacks on the sides. And for any other type of thing that I'm using, like I said, this man bag is good for everything. You can put everything in here, even magazines. If you um, if you run an AK or an exotic type of rifle or gun um, that doesn't have anything to fit your magazines in, this will save your day. Now I have seen people using some Chicoms underneath their webbing to put their AK magazines in there. Totally fine. I don't have it. Well, I had one. I converted it to something else uh, otherwise I could use it for my Vietnam gear but maybe I have to buy another one to put it back on my Vietnam gear now this kit um, has been laying in my closet for a long time because there were not really uh, Vietnam events in my area now lately there are some new events coming up in the Netherlands or closer to me and I'm looking forward to attend one of those um, there was also a big Vietnam event at Barenkov in uh, France that I sadly wasn't able to attend but i'm looking forward to get into some vietnam airsoft again because i really like how the games are going and the simplicity of everything and as you can see the gear that i'm wearing is in pretty good condition like this is 10 years old and i have been playing with this a lot yes the color is faded uh, but that's the look that i like now i never wash my clothes i always hang them to dry until they completely dry then i remove all the dirt and mud and i, I make them clean and then i put them away in a dry environment in a dark closet and this is how i keep my gear as clean and as good as possible over all those years so uh, yeah be careful with your gear don't put it in the washer too much because that will destroy your clothing uh, don't put this in the washer at all just keep it dry keep it dark and if you need it take it out and just yeah take care of it that's all uh, that's all i want to say about how to treat your gear um don't overwash it yeah that's my tip be lazy don't overwash it now we have been talking about all the gear that I have laying around everywhere around now uh, because I forgot some gear to take out and now everything is everywhere. Um, but the gear isn't everything. Um, I said in the beginning of the video that I was going to talk a little bit about Vietnam events and um, why they are so fun and what's my history about them. When I started playing in this gear there were no real Vietnam events. And there were some events in different countries, but that was also so far away. Um, a lot of the team went there to Portugal and Spain. I didn't had the chance to go there because when I joined the team, they didn't do those events anymore. And I was missing that in Belgium. So I did what I had to do and I, I, I just organized my own events and I had a lot of fun. I did five or six different Vietnam events, but because of the lack of time and um, the groups were a little bit getting smaller and smaller to, to find the right people, it was just harder. Um, so yeah, I just stopped doing that and with the rise of the new groups in the Netherlands and Belgium I hopefully we can get out there and have some more fun with those events Now what was special on the events that I organized that were specifically for Vietnam events? Well, they had some special rules uh, Respawn rules were different for the US as they were different for the VC like for example US had to has a base to spawn in VC had different spawn points that you can move around uh, they had to do assignments to get those spawn points so both teams were doing different missions so they were running around they didn't know what other people were doing and they accidentally hit into each other and uh, some nice battle arrays another thing that was really cool was that the Americans had to fight for their food or they had to drop incoming with food because they were in the field and a helicopter dropped in food and they had to find it the VC could take it away so they had really had to fight for their lunch and if they didn't find it they didn't have any lunch so that was really fun if they didn't find it um, well I always made sure they had something to eat uh, but yeah they they had to fight for their food and all those little things the US had to play in a team VC could play alone uh, respawn rules they were totally different um, it was just a whole different dynamic than on the games that you have uh, today well most of the games that you have today so yeah hopefully uh, in the near future I can take this gear out there on the field again because uh, the gear is not only just gear but this gear uh, represents the person that I am because this gear made me well not the gear but the people that were around this gear made me the person that I am today and it might sound cheesy and deep but this really has a special place in my heart this gear and my interest in the Vietnam War it will never go away that's why I like this piece of kit and yeah I will never do this away I will always have something special in my heart for this gear and also for the people that um, 
took me in in that team gave me a chance and yeah it's um something special for me so yeah hopefully in the near future i can take this gear back out on the field and have some fun and with those words i want to end off the video about my vietnam gear i hope you learned some stuff i hopefully you can use some of the things that i said if you have any questions don't hesitate and just put something in the comments i really like to talk about the gear that i have also if you're interested in doing a live stream about this gear just put it in the comments and i will try to put it in my live stream schedule i'm trying to do a live stream on the channel every month now we tried it last month and it really worked out pretty good so i'm looking forward to do that in the future and if you're interested in a topic like this just put something in the comments and i will put it on my priority list but this will be it for today um yeah if you have any questions let me know and uh, hopefully i see you next week for a new video bye